All right, y'all, no meds for you today because we got ourselves a fresh schizo mod to dive into. Extremist Ultimus dares to explore an alternative timeline where everything is a lot worse than normal and every major power today is on the verge of having a Syria-esque civil war. The mod has us jump in on the last year of the Tulsi Gabbard administration until the whole country falls apart into different factions for a civil war. And the demo for this mod has content for three of those factions. We got James Haddock of the Republican Union of America, a man who read 1984 once and thought the Oceanian government was spitting facts. The Lion of Socialism is an anarchist leader who represents what the average Twitter leftist thinks they look like. Uh, work, I have, I have like a 20-25 hour work weeks, which I think is fairly good. Um, so I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do think you do, Doreen? Feel, uh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. And finally, we have the Confederation of America. They are southerners who secede, but this time to preserve the American way. So they are supposed to be the sane leaders. Well, supposedly they are the sane ones of the bunch. Today, I'm gonna play Mr. 1984 himself, James Haddock, where we see him develop his party into a paramilitary group, and once the violence starts, use his power to take over the country and shape it into something that would cause Orwell himself to roll in his grave so much you could power a city. And if you end up enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you liked it so other people can see it too. So as you can see through these national spirits, America is not having a good time right now. In the lore, Tulsi Gabbard was apparently Bernie Sanders' VP, so with his death, she has to try to steer this Titanic when it's already about to hit the iceberg. There's a lot of lore explaining all the other stuff that happened in the world leading up today that I couldn't be bothered reading. In the beginning, you get to pick whose perspective you see, which decides what events appear to establish the context of your faction, so of course I picked the Haddock perspective. One of the first things Tulsi has done is appoint a Secretary of Homeland Security since Bernie refused to during his presidency, which got me thinking, like, what does the rest of Bernie's cabinet look like? So we got Andrew Yang as I guess our Secretary of Commerce, and for some reason Nina Turner is here too. Yeah, this country is so cooked right now. And at this time, James Haddock announced his presidency with a populist platform, but Haddock had more going on with his movement than just a presidential campaign. When riots were happening in Minneapolis, a paramilitary wing of the party, known as the Guard, deployed to quell the violence. And while they carried out the party's vision, Haddock would still publicly keep his distance from them. We weren't the only populists running though. From San Francisco, the Communist Party of America announced that they had, through some use of dark magic obviously, united the leftist parties in America into a coalition and had a woman named Gloria La Riva running for president. President Gabbard couldn't let this stand, so she banned them from running in elections for being communist, but she went the extra mile of banning Haddock too. This First Amendment violation could not stand, so of course we took this to court. And fortunately, the Supreme Court was willing to hear our case. While Haddock was preparing for his fight in the courtroom, Putin had prepared for his fight in Ukraine and started an invasion. But upon looking over here, I realized that Europe was looking kind of different. Like, we got an independent Galicia here, and Catalonia is free, but they're run by a Reddit moderator. Also, Kaliningrad is independent from Russia for some reason. Three months into the invasion, the Russian army has already had enough of the war, and mutinies start. Seeing where this ship is sailing, many Russian oligarchs just bail to save themselves. But while Russia is collapsing, Haddock is celebrating because the Supreme Court rules in his favor, saying that the executive order Tulsi did was unconstitutional, so he is free to run for president. More things to celebrate come with the news that Vladimir Putin was assassinated while giving a speech due to a bombing. Then the Republican Party splits between old school Republicans led by Ron DeSantis and new school Republicans led by Ben Shapiro. So once again, Russia was having revolts and once again it was communists taking over St. Petersburg. This was only the beginning as very quickly Russia just started balkanizing. It was just too bad a bunch of random events about Haddock's guys clashing with police was interrupting me enjoying the collapse of Russia. But now we had our own chaos to deal with at home in Baltimore. There was a police shooting and the city was falling into chaos in response. Also, hold up, zoom in on this event. Yeah, I don't think Wolf Blitzer would say this. 
or any newscaster, to be honest. Anyways, Baltimore is falling apart, the police are running, the National Guard is sleeping on the job, so it's up to Haddock's boys to contain the chaos. They start chasing the anarchists throughout the city and trap them in a police station. Unfortunately, they are unable to force them to surrender, so they just end up in a staring contest. Fortunately, a completely innocent white van with some National Guardsmen in it came by to offer their help, and just suicide charged the police station. Nobody thought too much of this until they saw the van just explode and destroy the police station. In the aftermath, Haddock found out that these weren't just some random suicidal National Guardsmen, but actually federal agents sent by the DHS. Of course, Haddock had to use his information to further sink the Tulsi ship. Eventually, the first presidential debate happened, and on the stage we had President Gabbard, Haddock himself, along with Ben Shapiro and Ron DeSantis. And upon looking at the responses to the first question about wealth inequality, all I gotta say is that whoever wrote this has not ever heard DeSantis speak, cause he would not say this. Later on, when the election happens in November, nobody wins enough votes to be declared a winner. While every candidate tries to negotiate with each other to get their support, violence erupts in Norfolk, Virginia. The National Guard deploys there to rein in the rioters, but they can only do so much. The House tips things over the edge by declaring Tulsi Gabbard the winner, which leads to people more openly and violently questioning the legitimacy of the government. Footage emerges from Norfolk of a National Guard soldier being killed by a gang of anarchists. You don't get to rush this. And this footage goes viral, with the men behind this video using that fame to start a true uprising in the city led by the Lion of Socialism. America had finally hit the iceberg, and it was time to start jumping off this ship. Next up, the Southerners seceded, but as a way to save America and its values this time. Haddock knew there was no better time than now, so he declared his own faction in New York to fulfill his destiny. With his base established, he moved to aggressively secure the rest of New England, and his supporters took up arms to defend their new fatherland, the Republican Union of America. Even former soldiers from the US joined Haddock on his journey. But for some reason, there were people in this country that did not want to support a guy who has a radical paramilitary group supporting him, so we'd have to deal with them. Another group called the Black Legion mobilized, which was made up of more common people and less professional, but still professed great love for Haddock, and they were still very useful for us since we could use their numbers to bolster our strength and convince the people of New Jersey, New York City, Philadelphia, and Delaware that they would be on the right side of history with us. The remaining parts of the US still controlled by the feds were divided between the multiple branches of the military to attempt to maintain some sort of control, but that didn't really work out because even more people broke away. We even had people break away from the RUA, but these forest people did not stand much of a chance. With America at rock bottom, it was up to me to rebuild it. Finally, we could see Haddock's focus tree and really... understand his plans for the country. I mean, it looks like he got his degree in political science from Fallout New Vegas, but still, in order to accomplish this dream, we need to make sure the people are united. But with Haddock, it doesn't matter how they fall in line as long as they do it. For some reason, the anarchists in Virginia won a non-aggression pact, which I find crazy because we've been beating up anarchists for a year and a half at this point, so accepting this would just be a plot hole. As I try to promote unity in the RUA, some people are still resisting, with New York City and Boston openly defying us. Of course, I'm not going to let them go, they just needed to be reinvaded to be reminded of their place. But it seems like nobody can get along in the country since even the Guard and the Black Legion are at each other's throats. The best I could do was delay the inevitable while taking care of the rebellious cities. Fortunately, they couldn't fight back very hard. Like, what's a bunch of mad citizens with pistols and rifles gonna do against APCs? It was time for me to focus on fighting the Feds. Tulsi was still there in Washington DC, and she had to go down. It seemed like everyone else agreed since there was nobody in the city to defend her, also nobody in her faction even joined the war, so I just got to annex DC without a fight. It feels like that was not intentional since the faction with all the fed forces had disbanded, making it really easy to just secure the rest of Pennsylvania. 
I was gonna take out the Marines of Virginia just as easily, but then the Guard and the Black Legion decided they needed to fight it out now, but at least they had a decency to fight somewhere empty. Problem was, once the Guard was defeated, the Black Legion, for some reason, decided they shouldn't listen to me, and turned on me. Now, they could have been a serious problem if there was more than five of them around, so I could just overwhelm them with my army and kill them. But we're not done in this region yet, because someone else apparently has it out for me. And this rebellion feels oddly personal, like they just really wanted to get my attention. Because they didn't even have units to fight me, so we just kinda strolled through the forest here. The gloves are off after this. We were gonna continue the American tradition of not following laws when they inconvenience us. Some people may accuse me of being a war criminal, but I'm just saying it's a skill issue on their part for not being ready for everything. Haddock had declared himself the rightful successor state of the United States, and he was fully intent on accomplishing it. We even started to work on a secret project to build new super soldiers for the regime. Anyways, if we wanted to be seen as the legitimate successor of the United States, we had to continue liberating territory. The next target was the Confederation of America. Since they had a bunch of government officials from the former government, they were kinda cramping on my claim for America. I thought it could be easy if I just speed ran into their country and crushed them, but just like the Union realized in 1861, Southerners can actually fight pretty well. Little did I know, uh, Joe Jorgensen was actually a really inspiring military leader, and I was gonna have to work for this. But this couldn't be a fair 1v1, because the Great Lakes people are declaring on me, citing something stupid like, crimes against humanity, like, come on, what happened to honor in warfare? Fortunately, they weren't very good at war, and I could just toss them back to Ohio. I would then refocus on destroying the Confederates, soon taking their capital in Atlanta. To help me in this war, I did an industry focus that temporarily gave me some very overpowered bonuses, and I could make them permanent if I met certain production quotas. Problem was, whoever set these targets is higher than the International Space Station because there was no way I was hitting all of these. You'd think maybe I could do it by seizing stockpiles from other warlords, but by the time I capitulated the COA and got the southern stockpile and all the weaponry from the surrendering people of the Great Lakes, I wasn't even halfway there. But I think I'd be okay because I had another overpowered economic bonus to help me out. I still needed to clean up the Midwest from military rule. The army had declared war on me, but considering I could only attack them from this narrow corridor in Oklahoma, I had to expand this front. But the mod doesn't allow me to declare a new war, so Haddock had to get creative. He sat down and summoned a war goal against the chair force so we could finally clean up a bunch of the Midwest and Rocky Mountains. I guess California saw the writing on the wall and declared war on me to go down fighting. It was pretty late for me to notice this, but I hadn't done any of the cultural stuff of the focus tree, and now that I'm properly looking through this, I can see that there is a lot to unpack about what is happening here, so just to summarize this wall of text, it's just 1984, and you decide how bad this country is going to turn out on a scale of Hitler to Pol Pot. And looking at the end result of one of the branches, hypernationalism is looking like the best case scenario here. With California conquered, Haddock could actually claim to be the legitimate successor to America to make the rest of the warlords fall in line. But with all my attention focused here in North America, I never really looked around the world to see what has happened. Russia and China are still ununited messes. Somehow North Korea took over Vladivostok and they liberalized apparently. But that's not the weirdest thing here because somehow Bear Grylls has taken over Scotland. The last warlord to join Haddock's wild ride was Texas, and with their surrender, Haddock could proudly announce to the world that America was finally united, but instead of fighting for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Haddock's America was going to be about security, order, and the enforcement of obedience. Also, just came to the sudden realization that I was supposed to be coring American territory this whole time, but I never had any political power to do it because it was just being sucked up by this Facility X construction, which was done by the way, so somebody has just been blatantly stealing money from the government this entire time. 
I can't even stop it either, so Haddock has to use his magic powers once again to summon political power. But fixing the country is just so easy now. I don't get why Biden doesn't do this, like, inflation just got handled and racism completely eliminated just like that. It's like he's not even trying in the White House, I swear. Just want to say for the record, I've done this campaign with one doctrine. I've just not been getting XP this game, but it's not like it matters. The stats of equipment are so overtuned in the mod you don't need it. Like, 620 base soft attack on a simple 20 width division is just insane. They were just throwing numbers at a dartboard for this equipment, I swear. So when it comes to finally liberating my neighbors, they really can't do anything to stop me. The only thing Canada has going for it is its size before Trudeau finally throws in the towel. And as for Mexico, the ma numerous mountains there are basically a speed bump. I really like the presentation the mod devs did with Haddix America. To represent how much the US has fallen to darkness, they made the country so dark you can't even make it out on the map. But anyways, with this, the campaign is pretty much over. I mean, there are some flavor events about how Haddock has implemented his authoritarian regime by brainwashing the youth in camps and ending racism with forced relocation of ethnic groups around the country, but a man can only be bothered to read so much in a Hoi 4 mod, so if you want to see the flavor so bad, you can go play the mod yourself. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this playthrough of Extremis Ultimus, and if you did, feel free to like the video so maybe someone else will see it too. And subscribe to the channel to get more good stuff coming in your future, and see you all next time.